G'day guys, my name's Marty Gopping. I play Lucas Riggs in Call of Duty Vanguard, which is out now. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm on the man cave with, uh, with Elias. So if you want to get into a game sometime, come and visit me on Twitch and uh, we'll see you there. Martin, welcome to the cave. Thank you so much, mate. It's great to be here. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm just uh, just brewing my morning coffee while I'm talking to you. There you go. Uh, you know, exciting gotta... time. Uh, Call of Duty, Lucas yep. Rigg. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been an interesting, interesting couple of weeks with the release of the game. Um, yeah, obviously very exciting. We had the premiere a couple of weeks ago, downtown LA, and um, all the billboards and posters have been going up around around the world, which is very surreal. Yeah, I can't wait till we talk more to that. I was doing some research on you. Born in Australia? Yep. Yep. Melbourne, Australia, and moved out here uh, around 2008. Wow. So, what, what made you do the big move? And uh, how did you decide to get into the industry of like uh, even acting and just voiceover? Yeah, I've been doing voiceover for, for a long time. Uh, I do, I used to do poetry readings and radio, uh, radio plays back in Australia uh, when I was at drama school. And then moved over here and got a got a voiceover agent. You know, primarily I'd been working just as a theatrical actor, uh, film, TV, and theater. And uh, but I have always loved the voiceover work. And I, you know, I'd been doing commercial work before I moved over here in Australia. And uh, yeah, got a voiceover agent, and then did a lot of voiceover auditions, and nothing really hit here um, until about two thousand, I think, fifteen. Oh wow. I booked my first job and, you know, my agent, who's a very dear friend of mine, uh, she, she's like, look, it takes time to break in. Once you're in, generally you're in. And uh, yeah, since that job sort of things have kept rolling, which has been great. Yeah. I saw you've done some TV also. What do you, uh, what do you enjoy more, the TV, the film or the voiceover? Um, from the work that I've done, I've, I've probably had more of a chance to really sort of explore characters on uh in film and, and gaming um i do love television uh but yeah i've probably I've, i guess i felt a little bit more at home with the with the film and tv uh, sorry the film and video game roles that i've done uh, i would love to do more tv but um yeah i haven't i haven't sort of delved too much into it in yeah. in the states i did quite a lot when i was in australia which i really enjoyed um but you know it's performance is performance and i think if you're working with a really good team um whether it's film tv gaming theater it, you know it's yeah. you can you can get a pretty similar experience what's the difference between auditioning for like you know a tv or like film role and then voiceover um so well, we've got the two different sorts of voiceover you know you've got your standard commercial work and then and then you've got the you know pcap that you would do for um things like video games and uh, animated series and what have you. And if there's performance capture, it's, it's very physical. So you want to be very, very prepared. Um, and because, you know, you, you might have to move around a lot of, you know, some of the video game auditions, you're literally in a battle. Um, and I've found with film and television auditions, you're less likely to have super action orientated um, scenes in the audition that might yeah. come you know i've done a lot of action films um but generally they'll choose a more dramatic scene whereas a lot of the, the gaming auditions you know I've, I've walked through a volume in an audition pretending to hold guns and i remember the first one i did years ago i had no i wasn't quite prepared enough and i had no idea what i was doing and next thing you're running through a room with rubber guns um which you're not really going to be doing uh, on a theatrical audition yeah. for film and television, you know. Yeah. How did how did you uh, fall into the video game industry? Because you've not only done Call of Duty, you've done other video games as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, initially, like I didn't really know that much about uh, performance capture before I moved to the states, and yeah. I moved here with a, a good friend of mine, Tim Phillips, who actually he's uh, one of the stars of the film I just directed, and we went to the grove which is a 
like like shopping center in LA and there's a cinema there and we watched this animated series called uh, sorry animated movie called it was like Mars Mars for Mums or something like that and at the end of it they showed all of the actors in their pcap suits and you know they're they're in the volume uh yeah. doing performance capture and i remember like nudging tim going dude that's what i want to do like that looks so fun he's like yeah yeah you know <laughs> and his, his career was going great at the time cut to six months later he booked a uh the lead role in of dante in dmc devil may cry and spent months on the volume you know shooting performance capture and i'm like damn that's what i want to know <laughs> um but then yeah i you know i i did a i did a little spot in infinite warfare and then the uh, rainbow six job came up which was uh fantastic and initially that was just voice work and then uh they did some cinematics for the tournament of champions which was a huge event in 2020 uh, up in montreal i released this incredible cinematic trailer wow. and i play a character called mozzie in that and uh yeah i got to i got to go up to montreal and work with the creative team at ubersoft and they were amazing and had just one of the best weeks of my life uh, on nice. the volume and basically learning the ropes of performance capture uh, and for those of you that don't know that might be listening um pcap's basically where you wear kind of looks like a wetsuit it's not yeah. a wetsuit it's more felty and it's got little uh silver balls all over it that get picked up by a whole bunch of cameras in what's called a volume which is a big square grid uh, and then you have the little dots that i'm sure people have seen on videos all yeah. over your face to to track your your motion and your movement and then they digitally lay skins over the top of you and insert you into a virtual world that they've created That's great so yeah let's talk about call of duty how crazy yeah. is like the fan base for call of duty like every year people wait for the next game just to come out yeah yeah it's uh they're passionate man they're they're a passionate crowd um you know i think it, i wasn't quite expecting it i mean the the siege fan base is very very large and very passionate um you know cod is i would say a little bit more intense um i i think i'm i'm very lucky that the, you know the characters that i've done people seem to respond really well to mm. um because you get you get a lot of messages on instagram and through social media and um there's been a few sort of strange and nasty ones but for the most part people are really really welcoming and and seem to like the character i can imagine if you played a bad guy that that people didn't like it, it could get crazy you know what it's I mean? a video game why should people get mad about a character that is not even your fault <laughs> i know but i think i think the, the interesting thing about it is you know and we you, you know we're all I think most of us nowadays are gamers in some respect. And when you're, if you're like really into it, if you're really into gaming and you're spending 10 hour days yeah. with, you know, my voice or another voice actor's head voice in your head, um, you, you, you form a connection, you know, it's like watching a film a hundred times. You start forming a connection with the people you're watching yeah. and, you know, there's an element of, of, of reality to that connection you know you, you get to know certain aspects of them and um and so yeah people would they you know i think then sometimes not think they know you a little bit better than they do but it's great you know i'm, yeah. I'm grateful for those connections it's funny because like i'm 44 i was playing the older call of duties you know back in the day and then you know i, yeah. I, I have a, this is i do this podcast show as a side thing you know i work full-time two kids so when they go to bed, you know, I'll turn on the Xbox sometimes and I'll play it. It's just like, it's one of those like stress relievers also. You just want to go online and play, but I don't even wear the headphones anymore because these kids that are going online these days, they're way too good for me. I know, right? I know, it's crazy. I've, I've been playing as well. I'm actually the same age as you. But um, yeah, I find the same thing. And the thing I really, I've really enjoyed about gaming is, because I played a lot, you and I probably grew up with a lot of the same games. I started on the, I think it was a Megalobox or something playing Pong. But um. That you know, I'm a huge uh, movie buff, and I, I love watching movies. But I do find that it's it's somewhat a passive activity, um, whereas gaming is very active. You know, you, you're emer emerged in it, and you, you are actively doing things. Whereas you know, movies, you're kind of sitting there. It's more voyeuristic, mm. and I I love that that quality. That sometimes you you don't just want to sit on the couch and and relax. Right. Sometimes you want to switch off from the world and have some fun. Um, but you want to be active 
and that's where I've, I've loved, you know, gaming. I've been getting into Warzone lately and, uh, mate, you, you like, you come out of it, your heart's, you feel like you've been at war, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing how, how far, you know, gaming's come. Oh, yeah. So what was the process for this? Uh, how long did you do the voiceover and like, did you do your own stunts in it also when you're wearing the uniform, the, the thing? Some, some of the milder, uh, you know, action sequences I do, but um, you know, I think the team at Sledgehammer was very, uh, you know, careful not to let us do anything too dangerous. There was a, a really talented stunt cream, uh, stunt, stunt team there. Uh, and stunt coordinators and anything that was that was hairy, you know, they'd take care of. Which, you know, I'm I'm not against. I do love doing some of my own stunts when I'm doing films, but you know, you hurt yourself and you you're offset. Yeah. And especially during COVID, um, I don't think anyone. I don't think they would want to risk anyone getting hurt ever anyway. But I I think it was very much a situation where it was like nothing can go wrong on this because we you know we need we've got a time frame and we have to deliver and. Um, with the COVID restrictions that were on, if anyone got COVID or or got injured, it could have, you know, really delayed release. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, there was a few different stages. I I started off on the volume and I did all of the the performance capture, and then once we had all that down, I, I kept going back into the studio and um, working with Dave uh, Swenson and JB, the director, uh, as a creative director and director, and you know we do a lot of the voice lines uh, that were sort of pickups for other. Uh, animated sections that I didn't necessarily um, do because of, you know, you, you go in, you, you go into this ROM, um, which is where they do range of motion on your face. And it's like this crazy big silver ball with hundreds of lights and cameras all around you. And they film you from every angle. So they basically digitally map you so they can, I guess, recreate you to the yeah. rest of time, which is awesome. And we've heard about actors doing that, you know, digitizing their face so that they can keep using their likeness until the dawn how of time. How cool is that, seeing your face on a video game? Do you want to know how cool it is? It's the, <laughs> it's the coolest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> it's so weird, man. The first time I kind of started seeing the concept artwork, because it looks like you, but it's not you, but it kind of is you, but yeah. you know that it was you that made that. And, it, man, it's a trip. Um, especially when you're watching clips of your character fighting in the game, getting blown to smithereens. Yeah. That's weird. That's very weird. Yeah. Um, but I love it. I really do. And, um, you know, they, they, they used our likeness and did an amazing job. Uh, it, you know, I feel like I'm looking in the mirror. How funny is it like the video game industry has changed so much now that you have to have like even like a director for a video game. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, a producer. I yeah right i know um it, it's an interesting thing especially with the cinematics and um it is vital you know i'm i'm realizing just how vital it, well like we had uh luckily jb blank who has, is an amazing voice artist and he's done a ton of uh he's done a ton of vo uh, voice work over the years and so he he's very familiar with the volume and very familiar with the process and um i think without that it you know, it could be challenging because you need an understanding of how the characters are going to fit into the volume. And you need to realize that the volume has to match the, the digital world that's being built by the creative team. And um, yeah, you, as a performer, I, I like a good director. I'm, I'm very much my own man as an actor. I don't like to be molded awesome. too much. Um, but, you know, if you're working with a great director, like you just listen and do what they say as much as possible. I dig my heels in at times on every job. I'm like, no, I do, yeah, I do things my way. You, but that's just you, me being stubborn. You, you mentioned uh, about the the premiere that was a a few days ago. What so like for a premiere for a video game? What do you what are they exactly do you guys do? Because it's not like a film or you know movie or a TV show. You actually go and watch the release. So what's the difference for a video game right. premiere? Well, yeah, I guess that's the interesting. This is the first video game premiere I've been to. Um, I've been to film premieres and, and premieres of TV shows and stuff, but uh, well, you can't go inside after you do the red carpet and watch the film because yeah. it's 16 hours of gameplay or, you know, whatever. That's how long it's taking me on veteran mode. But, um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not sort of possible to sit down and watch that much content. But uh, for this one, they had a I – th I think it was streamed on YouTube. I should watch it. I mean, I was there, but I should watch it. But um, 
you basically, you know, we walked the red carpet with the, with the rest of the cast and, and some of the creative team. And then um, it, at the theater that we had it at upstairs, they had uh, four, I think they had four PlayStation set up so that people could play wow. the games. Wow. And there was like a, you know, it's like a big um, bar area and they had delicious food and there were hip hop stars and like the, some of the Lakers were there. Um, and then when you go into the actual theater part, um, they had courage playing some of the games. He's a, he's a streamer and a gamer. And, uh, and then, and, and, you know, you got to watch the levels and, um, they did select, uh, parts of different levels so that you could get a feel, feel for the whole game. And, and then they ended up pulling up this curtain and the LA Philharmonic was playing oh, wow. the score to the game live to the gameplay. It was wild. Yeah. Um, and T Pain was hosting, and then you know he came out on stage and and he was rapping, and then Migos came out and did like a full show. It was it, honestly, it was so much fun. That's it. Um, yeah, I could do it every week. Did you did you go on stage too? Did you go rap? I no, I wanted to, but the surreal thing was, um, they had four of the uh, principal cast: um, Kingsley, Polina, and. Uh, and Wade Jackson, which is uh, Derek Phillips, Laura Bailey, and, and uh, Chike Okonkwo, and and myself. And they had these huge, like, I don't know how big they were, 20-foot posters of us. It was very weird, and it felt cool, <laughs> but, like, I was so grubby on my poster. I'm like, no one's going to, you know, no one's yeah. going to know who I am. No one had any idea who I was. But, um, you, you know, it felt special, you know. What did you enjoy the most about voicing this character? Um, I think probably the similarities that I felt to him. Um, there, there's some, you know, I've been out of Australia for a long time and I, I try and get back there every year, but I do feel that, you know, it's, it's where I was born. It's, it's my yeah. home. And, um, I've, there's something about Australia that, that I think goes very deep within anyone who's, who's spent a lot of time there. And, um, and just Australians, you know, there's a, a kind of quirky ruggedness to them and a and an honesty that I really, really uh, love. And and it, it feels like me. And I think the Riggs character has got a lot of those qualities. He's just he just is his own person, and um, he he fights for what he believes in, and he's a bit rough around the edges. And I, you know, I guess I feel a lot of those qualities within myself from time to time. And you know, being able to lean into that and have fun with it um it was just awesome you know yeah unlock so, those parts of yourself uh, so now what's uh what's next for you any other projects or yeah yep yeah. i've got a, a feature film that i i wrote and directed and uh and starred in comes out where we just had the uh, north north american premiere at naples international film festival it's called the dunes and uh that also stars tim phillips my friend who uh was in DMC Devil May Cry, and we've got the Australian premiere on December 11th at uh, Monster Fest, which is a, a huge genre festival in Australia at Cinema Nova in a little suburb called Carlton, um, which I'm heading back for, uh, which I'm really really excited about. So we're moving into sales and distribution on that film, and uh, I'm also doing a Comic Con appearance at Melbourne Comic Con. Comic Con. I saw that this morning on your uh, on your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've done a few conventions before, and I, I really do love them because all of the you know the people who who play the games, you know, go get a chance to meet them all, and um, it's it's always a lot of fun. So I'm really 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 looking forward to that. Yeah. I saw that you do Taekwondo. How many years have you been doing? I just signed up my daughter. She's two weeks oh, into fan it. Fantastic. I've done a lot of martial arts over the years. Um, and taekwondo i think i think i did it for a couple of years um okay. yeah i i think i finished up after I, I won a tournament uh i won the oceanic championships back in australia and oh god it was 2005 i think mm. um and then moved more into doing muay thai uh and kickboxing um but yeah i think it's a fantastic discipline i think martial arts are incredible i think for any kids i did karate when i was like eight for for a few years and uh, I think, you know, if you've got good instructors, the disciplines and, um, you know, mar marrying the, the spiritual with the physical is a, 
a really important aspect i think for anyone growing up so i think you've made a really good decision yeah. and i love do you it. uh do you still keep active with it do you still train yeah i haven't trained probably in a couple of years uh, the last thing i was doing was muay thai and i do definitely want to get back into it i actually want to do a little bit of boxing um my kicks were always good but i, I think i can strengthen up my punches a little bit um but yeah definitely keen to jump back in the ring and start so I know swinging uh, how can the viewers and listeners find your social media? Because I saw that you have a huge following on Twitch. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I guess uh, when COVID hit, um, I'd just been up to Montreal for the SI Invitationals, which is a Rainbow Six Siege uh, tournament. And my TikTok had exploded. Um, I, I guess I think I posted some videos of me doing vo uh, Mozzie's voice lines. And uh, it really I started you know, getting quite a following and, um, and a lot of the people that were following me, you know, when COVID hit wanted me to, they kept saying, do you stream, do you stream? And I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And they said, you know, you, you play games and we watch you, we'll, we'll give you money. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they said, yeah, you do it on this thing called Twitch. And then once again, my friend, Tim Phillips actually was like, yeah, tw I told him and he's like, yeah, Twitch. He said, my cousin does that. It's it, you can you can do really well on it. Anyway, I I went off. It's lockdown. I got nothing else to do, so I went went and bought a bought an Xbox, and uh, loaded up Siege, and um, played Siege on my telly, and angle my telephone when I was doing like TikTok lives at me, and then I pointed at the TV, and people would watch me do like all the um training levels. I was terrible. And you know, it what seventeen months later, I've got like a full setup. You know, I've got amazing cameras and lights, laser beams in the background, and uh, I just love it. I I have so much fun doing it, and it's, I think it's it's very helpful for um. You you might cut out a little bit. Cutting out a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully, is that better? Is that any better? Is that yep, any better? Yep, there testing, we go. One, two, three, testing one, two, there three. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I find, you know, working in, you know, film television, you have long periods of time often without, you know, without performance, you know, you, you're waiting for your next job or you're in yeah. pre-production or what have you. Um, and for me, you know, Twitch is a way of interacting with your audience and, and letting them know what you're up to and performing, you know, yeah. um, and it's, it's something that, that you're in control of. I think one of the most difficult things for a lot of actors is, especially if you don't make your own content, you're at the mercy of, of producers and, and directors yeah. and productions that, you know, you come onto for a short period of time, but the life of those productions, you know, revolves way before your performance and, and way after. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you have that deep seated, longing to perform and to entertain people um that that time can be difficult you know whereas what i think nowadays with you know mobile phone technology and and streaming platforms like twitch and youtube you can perform whenever you want and you know i think i've de developed a, a, a weird little version of myself it's, it's sure. definitely not the the everyday me when i'm streaming he's goofy and I mean, it is me, but it's me when I'm on, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, and plus I get to play games and, um, you know, pull in a little bit of revenue, which is always nice. Um, and, but in, most importantly, interact with, with the audience that kind of supports me, you know, and without, without an audience, you just, you know, a guy or a girl standing in a room yeah. yelling at the walls, you know? <laughs> so right. I think, without, right. you know, without an audience, we're, we're very limited to, the connections we can make so I'm, I'm super grateful for the all the people that come into my into my twitch stream and visit me on social media I, I try and write back to as many of them as i can can get a little bit difficult when you know you're overrun but it's great anyway all my socials at martin copping instagram twitter snapchat youtube uh facebook twitch what else is there i don't know I think on pretty much every yeah i'm on pretty much everything but it's always yeah. at martin copping and um yeah, it's it's fun, and I'm getting better at the games, which is the best part. It's great. Yeah, Martin, this was great. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. My oh, man, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate being here. Yeah.